Hi, my name is Pavel Bramensky, so this is a great pronunciation, thank you. <laughs> I came all the way from Canada. This is uh, my first time at MicroConf, and I'm really stoked. It uh, feels like a great place to be and the uh, right place to be. So uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be here and for um, also letting me speak uh, to you. There are a lot of talented and smart people here in the audience. So it's an absolute honor to be able to speak to, uh, speak to you for me. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, how do you start a SaaS business, especially when you're right at the beginning. You have completely no idea, or you may have an idea, but you don't know if it's in any good. Um, you, um, you haven't picked the market, for example, or if you have, part, if you have uh, picked the, the market, you don't know if it's, uh, um, you, don't know any, you don't have any connections with it, within this market, and you can all, uh, only use very basic tools, like, for example, Excel, uh, phone, or email, right? And I'm, this topic is really important for me, and uh, I'm ex extremely actually passionate about this because I probably failed so many times at, uh, at starting a SaaS business in the past. Um, I've, uh, I've run a, um, a SaaS business in enterprise uh, space. Uh, we're selling predictive analytics solutions to insurance companies. So I have some experience that, um, about that we'll be sharing. And also I went through a program called the Foundation last year, uh, which was extremely useful. And I'm in the process of starting my new SaaS right now as we speak. Uh, so I'm going to share uh, some, of, uh, some of my uh, experiences. So my goal is basically if I can help um, uh, even a handful of you to help you with, uh, save you some frustration, some time, and uh, some money uh, when you are starting your new SaaS business, that would be a huge win for me. All right, so a um, couple of things about this talk. It's, do it's definitely not a fully bulletproof uh, idea for success. It may, it may not work for you. It may not work for your market. Um, but it definitely, uh, I'll offer some practical advice. And it allowed me to basically focus on complete new market for me with no, completely no existing connections to that market and uh, go pretty quickly to seven customers um, before the uh, application was uh, created. All right, so how do you find those good business ideas, right? So first of all, you want to focus really on the target market. Even if you have an existing idea, you need, a, you need a target market because you need somebody to sell to, right? Target market is really a set of people or businesses with sim similar characteristics. Uh, then you want to contact the market. You are looking for the most painful um, unsolved or poorly solved problems. And once you found the problem, uh, what you want to do, you want to validate if this is the right problem for you to be pursuing um, before you actually start building the solution. And then once you, um, once you uh, pre-sell the solution to, to, to a couple of customers, um, then you can start developing the smallest solution, then you can actually launch it. So, okay, you have no market, how do you start? Well, you can just list of the industries that you're interested in. And uh, you can go to Wiki, you can go to uh, Google as well. Um, you can go to a site called referenceusa.com. Uh, there's a lot of information about US and Canadian, bus Canadian businesses there. Um, the criteria that I used, um, I wanted to at, to at least have between 2,000 and 5,000 businesses in my market. And the reason is um, because I didn't want to run out very quickly uh, um, uh, of, uh, of prospects to sell to. In my previous business, we were selling to insurance companies. And unfortunately, in Canada, there are, there are only about 150 of them. So we very quickly ran down to their list. We didn't have anybody else. So we need to change our strategy a little bit. Right? The other thing is affinity. Patrick McKenzie mentioned that um, if you don't like the market you're in, you should probably not uh, going to get, get, uh, go into, into this market. You don't have to love it. But uh, my advice would be don't hate it, because you're going to spend at least a couple of years building your company. Right? So if, you, if, this is not, if the market you're in, or you're thinking about is not really exciting to you, don't do it. Um, and the ideal markets are really uh, niche or are very small. Because why? Because they're underserved. No big competitor is going to actually enter this market. And for this method to work, this, mar this market has to be contactable. Um, email and phone is the minimum. Uh, Twitter, LinkedIn would work well as well. All right, so you have the market. Then what do you next? Um, you want to create even just a simple list of uh, businesses, and it can be a just Excel list of businesses. Uh, you need the name of the person, email, uh, phone, and uh, the website URL is useful as well. And then you want to send them an email and just say, "Hey, I'm doing a study on the market, and I'm looking for the main, uh, for the uh, for the biggest challenges or most painful problems in the business uh, that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you have, uh, do you mind speaking with me for 20 minutes?" And that's it. You can just state your name. Uh, put your contact information there so they can actually uh, call you or email you if they want. Uh, it happened to me, I sent an email, a, a guy called me five minutes later, we have great conversation. Um, so, um, and then, well, some people will say no, of course, but some people will say yes. So then schedule uh, some um, follow-up phone, uh, phone calls with them. And the uh, important thing is, um, on, those, uh, on those calls, just talk to them. What, uh, what kind of challenges uh, or problems do you have in your business? What keeps you up at night, right? What, what things you want to improve? What kind of internal projects do you have right now 
um, on improving um, on something within your business. An important thing is here, you actually have to, once you ask the question, just shut up and let them talk. The longer you'll be able to wait until you start interrupting them, the more valuable information you'll be able to find from them. And once you understand uh, that they really have a problem and you understand this problem quite well, you can actually ask them a question, uh, which is the uh, wave the magic wand question. And it's a really magical question because you can just tell, tell them, ask them, well, if, we could w if you could wave the, w uh, the, ma the magic wand, um, what, w what your solution would look like, right? And very often they will tell you exactly what they want, right? So the first mindset shift here is that the best ideas don't come from you, they come from your market. Right? The same way, and the same, um, uh, the same way Joanna said that the best marketing doesn't come from you, it comes from your customers, it's the same thing here, right? The best ideas come from, 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 uh, from your customers. And the other thing is, um, the second mindset shift here is that um, those customers exactly know what they want sometimes, and the, and, and the solutions that they will uh, tell you what they, you know, what they want, with a little bit of tweaking, you can actually start implementing that. So you don't have to even think about the solution, you can be given the solution by your target market. Right? So, okay, you've talked to the market, you have a couple of problems. Uh, what you want to find, uh, what you want to focus on, you want to list, of course, all, of the, all, the, all those uh, different problems, and you want to focus on the most painful, the least complex, which is the fastest to implement, and also the ones that offers the highest value for the customer. And why? Because the solutions to those kind of problems are the easiest to sell. And, and then before you start developing, the, before you start uh, writing the first line of code, you want to actually sell your non-existing product to a couple of prospects. So how do you do that? Well, you got to schedule a phone call with them, tell them that uh, you're excited about solving this problem, and tell them, um, first, explain the problem. Well, tell them what the problem is, as you heard it from them, make sure they understand it. You can even agitate the problem a little bit because it will motivate them to look for solution. And then talk, talk, to, them, talk to them about the solution. Uh, talk to them um, how the solution will actually ma make uh, their life better. And uh, once you get the confirmation from them, then ask them to buy it. And you can tell them, well, I'm looking for, you can be honest, I'm looking for, you can tell them, I'm looking for three to five people, um, and uh, uh, once I have five, three to five people, then actually I'll be building the solution, right? And very often they will say yes, um, so this is great, you found one person, then go and repeat with a couple of people. One is not enough, three, f three four, five, and up, then this is, uh, it's, uh, it's getting much better. And then you can start developing your product. So here's an example. I got a check for a personal check from a lady uh, that is thousands of miles away from me. She has never seen me. We exchanged a couple of emails, a couple of conversations. She had a painful problem. I offered to solve it. She sent me a check, personal check for 600 bucks. So it works. So why pre-selling is ex such a powerful con concept, why I like it? Because when you're starting a company, you're going from the problem, then you're, developing a, you're looking at the, developing the solution, you're building the product or service, you're marketing and selling, right? So with pre-selling, what you can do, you can shorten the cycle, because building and marketing can take you months or years, and sometimes you may give up and you may never, never ship the product like some other people said before, right? So with pre-selling, you can actually do this cycle very quickly. With a little bit of a practice, you can, you can try a couple of different ideas and you can achieve it within one half an hour conversation. So it dramatically reduces the risk for you. All right, conferences. Uh, conferences are amazing, uh, especially trade, co trade uh, shows or uh, industry conferences. Why? Because the pace of learning is incredible. You learn so quickly about the people in the industry, about the trends, um, um, about, uh, you know, generally about, about the industry, right? So, and then you also get the rapid feedback from, from the people. If you are even uh, working a couple of ideas, you can actually, um, uh, you can validate it very quickly, right? You can have multiple conversations within uh, one day. Um, and I think conferences are great because they attract the right crowd. They are attracting people who want to learn more about the indus their in the in industry. They want, to, they want to know what their peers are up to. Uh, so, uh, as you know, Jeffrey Moore crossing the cosmos, you are actually, um, picking the early adopters. These are the right people for you to be talking to. So by coming, by going to a conference, you're actually pre-qualifying your audience. And follow up with them after the conference because uh, you can learn a little bit more. And I think smaller is better. As microconf is just you know, about 200, 220 people, those smaller conferences offer you this uh, high collision rate, which is basically you are bumping uh, into the same people several times, which is useful because you're building relationships. And those relationships will be super useful later on because those people will introduce you to their friends, colleagues in business, they'll help you market your product. Um, they'll tell you why your website doesn't look the way it should. And, um, and uh, so focus on building those relationships. It's really useful. So specifically, what worked, didn't work for me? Um, I was lucky to get the chairman of the association was one of the customers. I was reaching out to other people within the association. And uh, I asked her if I could use her name. She said, fine. I sent an email. The response rate was quadruple. So a lot more people wanted to talk to me. 
And get specific. If you're not getting the right quality answers that you're expecting, get, ask more specific questions, right? You're not asked, you can ask instead of what, what is the problem that you're dealing with, with, with or which you're struggling with in your business, you can ask, okay, what about the sales? What about when you're delivering the, um, the, the product or service to your customers, right? You can be much more specific with that and you will get better answers. And get personal, as I said, it's fine to talk, uh, to treat them even as friends on the call because they will be, um, they will be uh, much more willing to share more information with you. Uh, recording the calls was extremely useful for me. I'm one of those uh, people that I can either pay attention to what somebody else is saying or uh, I can take notes, but I cannot do two things at the same time. So I was um, able to record the phone calls uh, and then I was able to take detailed notes after the call and, um, and that was super useful too. And stay in touch with them. One uh, person said, um, well, said no initially when I was trying to actually pre-sell him. Two months later, I got, new, got an email from him saying, um, hey, I'm in, uh, send me an invoice. So here's, here are my stats. Um, uh, within mar one market that I picked, completely new, I just sent 174 emails over 10 weeks. So it was part, completely part-time effort for me. I was running another company at the same time, so I was pretty busy. Um, and uh, from those 174 emails, I was able to get uh, to 32 people, which led to 52 conversations. Um, and uh, I found eight potential business ideas. I picked one, and I was able to sell seven people. And we're at a point right now that we can sh actually start scaling. We have the solution that's proven, and uh, we can attract more, more people. Uh, all right, so I think there was one slide missing here, but it's fine. All right, so I think there was one slide missing from the presentation, but uh, thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, um, you know, meeting you, and uh, if you have any questions specific about this topic, talk to me later. Thank you. Thank you.